Howdy, and welcome to Opera Shred. We want to provide in-depth trail coverage for some of our favorite mountain bike trails in Arkansas. We're going to show you every mile, so we'll speed through sections that are basic and focus on the more technical aspects of the trail, as well as vista points. We'll also provide some beta near the trailheads, like local brews, coffee, restaurants, campgrounds, etc., to make the whole experience that much more satisfying. In today's video, we're covering the Twin Mountains or Twin Knobs Trail, which is part of the Greater Lake Weddington Trail System. Half the trick is just finding the trailhead, so I've gone ahead and filmed the way so you'll be familiar with it. From Highway 16, either heading west out of Fayetteville or east out of Siloam Springs, head north on County Road 849 or Lookout Tower Road. You're going to drive about 2.6 miles. You'll see a few pull-offs and access roads to your right. Stay on 849, past the big field on the left, and eventually you'll come upon a fork in the road. You're going to want to take a slight right under the phone wires or power cables, whatever they are. You're going to go about another half mile. This section of the road is Martin Pedro Road. It's often in good condition. The next fork will take you on National Forest Road 867. You're going to drive another 1.4 miles from here. This part of the road may not be in great condition depending on the time of the year or after a long period of rain. So I recommend an SUV or a truck, but of course today we'll catch up to a minivan that seems to be doing just fine on the road. When you get to a turnaround point, don't stop here. You're about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 miles from the trailhead. You'll see the parking to your south or right and the trail is to the north or your left. More than likely, when you get to the trail, there won't actually be a sign that says Twin Knobs Trail or Twin Mountains Trail. Usually it gets torn down, but you're going to head left or to the north, and you're going to immediately start climbing. This is a great section of the trail. It's pretty old school, but it's got some new school rock formations. It's pretty rocky, pretty challenging. It's rated black. You're going to climb up some firmy, twisty trails with big rock placements, all of it rideable. Today's ride is being filmed by my son Boone, and out in front is Jacob, showing us the way. And of course, we brought Hugo. Who better to show us how to navigate the trail than Hugo the Sheepdog? While we ride to the base, let me just say that during hunting season, it's a good idea to wear bright colors or at least be cognizant of the fact that there are hunters in the area. Additionally, this is a very small section of the overall Lake Weddington trail system, which we'll cover in future videos. At about 0.4 miles into the ride, you're going to hit the business section of the first knob. You've done your climbing and now it gets really rocky. Again, there's always a line and it's a great ride, but take notice of some of the technical features.
once you complete the climbing section, you'll go down into a burmy section, almost like the climb. This is an out and back trail. So everything you ride down here, you'll ride back up at the end. In total, the trail is under six miles, at least this section of it, with a fairly easy connector trail between the two mountains. The trail dries out pretty well after a rain, but there are some sections after the first knob that can be incredibly wet. So just keep your eyes open or you'll dunk your front tire and go over the bars. The muddiest section is about 1.3-ish miles from the trailhead. There's normally a rockway built so that you can get through the muddy section. Sometimes it's fully submerged. Sometimes you just have to do a walk around. The two mountains are really connected by a fairly, I'll call it docile trail. It's still marked as a black diamond, but it's really on the easier side of blue, at least for the rating system in our area. You'll cruise along for about a mile, and then you'll begin to feel the climb onto the second mountain begin. As with the first mountain, you'll approach some switchbacks, and again, you'll face some rock features. The texture of the trail is a bit different than the first knob or the first mountain. It has some great line placements and some great rock features. As you watch the trail, I should note, sometimes it's better to actually take the rock route rather than try to avoid the rocks. A lot of the lines on this mountain, as well as the first, are totally rideable and they might look formidable, but trying to get around them can actually be harder than just identifying the line in the feature and taking it. At about two and a half miles into the trail, on the second mountain, you're gonna come across a Y. You're gonna want to go to the right to continue up the mountain. The 
great thing about Weddington is that it is rideable almost all year round, so long as it's not snowing or icing. It's a great trail and it's always fairly well maintained. You'll come across a series of rollers and drops, all rollable, rideable. Just pedal on through. After the third feature, you're gonna come across a rock climb. Again, it's steep, can seem formidable, so long as you're pedaling hard and in the right gear, it's totally rideable. It's coming right up. There's the descent, pedal on through it, and there's the climb right there. Take it right up the center, it's totally rideable. Now you're on your way to the top of the second mountain. Aside from the awesome technical terrain, the top of the second mountain is really the reward for all of this work. It's one of the highest points in the county, and according to some academics and geologists and historians, it is one of the seven wonders of Southern Washington County and Arkansas. Once you've reached the top, you're about two and a half miles in. Take some time to sit on the rock bench, photograph your bike, and take in the foothills of the Ozarks. Getting back down the second mountain is one of the best parts of this trail. Lots of berms, a few hits, and some great steep rollers. Once you're through the berms, keep your seat post low and your eyes open. There's no need to walk your bike on these sections. They're totally rideable. Stay to the right for the easier lines. You'll roll about two sections and then you'll have a punchy little climb and wrap around another berm. Near the bottom of the second mountain, you're gonna come across a fork in the trail. Stay to the right. Going to the left will take you back up and around. Great way to do laps, not a great way to get back to your car. All the rock features you had to ride up the trail, you now get to ride down the trail as you speed back to the first mountain.
And while we're speeding back to the first mountain, this is an opportunity for me to just sell one of my favorite recreational areas in the state of Arkansas. When you combine the trails and do an out and back to the Twin Mountains, you can put in about 25 miles. And this is on just classic single track in the woods. Rarely are there many folks out there. It's just a great trail system. The Twin Knobs or Twin Mountains Trail is just a small part of a much bigger trail system. As you begin your ascent up the back of the first mountain, that old school rocky trail terrain is there to greet you. It's as fun going up as it was going down. I will tell you the great thing about the first mountain is that the technical section at the top is so much easier going back down towards your car than it is going away from your car. So take courage, you can do it, you're almost there. Enjoy it. As with the second mountain, oftentimes it is easier to just take the rock, the line on the rock, as opposed to trying to avoid the rocks altogether. I realize this is easier said than done if it's misting or if the rocks are at all wet, but this trail in particular, when dry, the, rail, the rocks are really grippy and the lines are pretty clear. Fortunately, the trail profile when you're crossing the first mountain headed back to the trailhead is descending as opposed to ascending when you're headed out. This makes this section so much easier. Though I should say, pick your lines carefully or you'll find yourself, like I so often find myself, laying on the ground, looking up at my bike in pure bewilderment. Once you're through the business section of the first mountain, you'll find yourself back on the rocky terrain, 
with the switchbacks headed back to the trailhead. Now, if you've got some spare time and you just set the course record for the twin knobs, you can shoot right across the uh, dirt road and get onto the Twin Mountains Trail heading towards Weddington Recreational Area proper. Again, you can treat this like an out and back. So you can go as far as you want and then turn around and take a straight line back to the Twin Knobs Trailhead. I will cover the Twin Mountain Trail as well as Western Dawn and some of the other trails in future videos. So many of the trails in Arkansas are located near small towns where you can grab a coffee or a beer, talk about the ride with your friends. Weddington Recreational Area, kind of in no man's land between Fayetteville and Salem Springs. My recommendation is on your way out, take a left off of 849 onto Highway 16 and head east. You'll see a big gravel parking lot on Lake Weddington proper. Grab your camp chair and grab a cold, Ozark hardworking logger because for me that ride is hard work. Kick back, take in the lake, take in the forest, and enjoy yourself. Shred well, my friends. Thanks for joining us.